What's up, everybody? It's Bo here, and we are back. Oh, one fan craft. Wow. Wow. I actually don't know why these, like, skeleton horses are here. They've been here the entire time, and, uh, yeah, they have, they have something to do with this build. What is this build? It's like, it's like a creature or something or another. It, this is, this is something that Knight built, and it is from Harry Potter, and... I have no idea. I, I literally have no idea what it's in reference to, but that is, you know, kind of par for the course, right? This is this is what the Harry Potter district has been for me. But you know what? We're going to keep on keeping on because today is the day. And if you have been out there wondering what I would be building next, oh, are you in luck? Because today is in fact the day where we are going to be building this location right here, covering up this massive hole in the owl shop, thank goodness, and also building what I think, I think, in my limited knowledge and experience in fandom, I think is probably the most iconic location in all of Diagon Alley, and that is Ollivander's. Yeah, that's right, Ollivander's. Now, if you didn't know, now you know, and you should have known because I was kind of you know, kind of hinting pretty hard that that's what we would be building. And yes, indeed, that is what we've been building. Uh, we are, that is to say we are about to build and I have, okay. So I, I've put this build off and it's not because of like what it is and what it represents. Right. I mean, like, obviously we've got some really epic builds that we have added right behind me here to the Harry Potter district, but this one in particular, you know, it's, it's not that it's so iconic. If I'm being honest, it's just kind of boring. Like, if, if you think about it, like, the outside is a big gray building. Yes, has kind of some cool windows to it, and we'll kind of work on those and, and all that kind of good stuff. But for the most part, it's a big gray building on the outside, and then it's just it's just a mess on the inside. And, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of the fun, but it just, it just kind of is what it is. So, yeah, despite it being, like, this really big, epic, important location, I have, in fact, been putting it off. In fact, I've actually spent more time thinking about this little empty plot right here and what I wanted to put here instead of Ollivander's. But you know what? That ends today because today is Ollivander's day and we are going to make it happen. Now, you might be wondering with an Ollivander's, what are we going to sell in it? Because, of course, Harry, the Harry Potter district is, in fact, a commerce district. And yeah, you know what? You you probably you know, what? I'm just going to I'm just going to assume that you are as smart as I know you to be and we know, we know what I'm going to be selling there, right? Right? But you know what? With all that being said, let's jump into it. Let's go ahead and j dive into what is about to be a very gray, but very iconic build here for the Harry Potter district. Do you know what? I'm having the most difficult time ever with this build. Okay. So this has actually gone through like several redesigns as I've been building this. This is not my original concept that I came up with in my creative world, like at all. Well, I say at all. Structurally, it's very similar, but the actual like palette has gone through several iterations to the point where I've, you know, like, you know, this build, this build, that build, that build. I've been doing some building here in Harry Potter District. Anyway, all of these builds started off as designs, kind of ideas that I, I kind of tinkered around with and, and discovered while in creative. To me, that's generally the easier way to get kind of some of these more complex builds together, you know, before making them in survival. And I'm sure that a lot of, you know, that's, that's nothing that's new to me. That's most people, right? Well, this one is different. This one is different. Ollivander's has, you know, some pretty key components to it, right? You have kind of the bay windows on top of the bay windows that kind of go up. And then you've got a couple of windows up there, a sign right there and, you know, window right there. So, I mean, like that part's pretty much standard, but it just, I don't know. There's just something about this exterior that has been difficult. I do think this is right though. Then there's the other question too of like how tall does the building go? There's theoretically a smaller bay window that we'll put up here and then maybe some windows on top of that or maybe not. Might put a window right there and then sign right there. I don't know. I don't know. I think I've actually given up trying to fix this or make it work in creative and I'm just going full in here in survival. And uh not going to lie. I'm a little nervous about it. So yeah, I'm going to get a dive back in. Oh, a Dementor. Oh, a Dementor. Dementor. Uh, do I have a, I don't, yes, I do. Expecto Patronum. Expecto Patronum. Ah, Expecto Patronum. Expecto. That did not work. Uh, just gave my life for a bit. All right. Yep. I'm going to go and uh, take care of all of that. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Whew. Okay. I, uh, 
I've been working on it and I, I, I think I kind of nailed it. All right. I, as I mentioned this one, this is kind of new for me. I don't think I, maybe I have done this this season, but I'm not entirely sure. Most all of this design was like completely on the fly and here in survival, despite many attempts to get this right and creative, this is what I was able to come up with here in survival. And I, I think this, I think this is pretty good. I, I really do now. Okay. All right. So there are some key differences between this and the actual Ollivanders, Ol- Ollivanders. Anyway, the actual wand shop in Harry Potter. For one thing, there's a door that would typically be right on this side, but I didn't have enough room for that. And frankly, I kind of forgot about that. So <laughs> I could put one over there, but I don't want to. There's really no need for it. I think the idea is it would like bring you to like an upstairs apartment or something like that. And I just, I don't necessarily see a need for it. If I change my mind and nobody builds something on this side, I could always just kind of add that later. But for now, I think this is, I think this is fine, but it looks really good. I've got kind of the Ollivanders like hanging sign right there. We've got our bay windows going up kind of the two big ones down here, the little tiny ones up there. And then I was even able to add a few windows at the very top as well. Now, This build, despite being so difficult to get right on the outside, it's really about what's on the inside that counts. Now, this is where the wand shop is going to be. And in case you haven't quite figured out what I'm going to sell in the wand shop, well, wands, of course, we'll be selling wands, all of the wands. Yeah, yeah, all of the wands. That's what we're selling in the wand shop. It's going to be great. Go pick them up now. But I really want to get this like kind of, you know, despite it being such a tall building, I really want this to have kind of a cozy interior. And so we're going to be kind of bringing things in. I've already started laying out kind of where like the desk is going to be in a bookshelf and a little tiny desk. And then as you can see, the upstairs area, kind of lofty area up here, not not like a full upstairs, but just kind of this other storage area is going to be right here. And the walls have to be clustered with various kind of boxes and containers of of wands and all that kind of good stuff. It needs to look needs to look like a crazy person designed it, which isn't difficult because because I did. I, I did do that. <laughs> all right. So yes, let me get here in on this interior and let's see where we go from here. And I think we have done it. We have got ourselves Ah wow wow Wow. Okay. See this, this is, this is why it's good to look when you fly. You know what I mean? Like I was going to do a kind of a cool, you know, Hey, I'm flying. That's a cool way to, to transition, right? Nope. Nope. You run into trees, except I am awesome. And I, 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 <laughs> so interiors. Yes. Interiors. Everything's fine. That tree didn't kill me. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look and see what happened here. Actually, before we look at there, you can kind of see it through the windows, but I want to kind of show this off over to the side because I did decide that having kind of a a little door off to the side was actually a benefit because it allows for a way to get up to the second floor and we actually need more beds here. (laughs) In fact, it's nighttime right now. I will demonstrate the benefit. Now, admittedly, there's nothing up here, so this has no interior, but but it could, and it will, maybe, I don't know. We might put like a little tiny room up there or something like that, but kind of offer up a way so that people can sleep while they are here in the Harry Potter district. I think that's a plus. But regardless, uh, yes, okay, this right here. Now, I went ahead and put the sign on it, Ollivander's Wand Shop, and as you go in, you can see it is looking pretty crazy and nice and has all kinds of messiness. You can see walls and walls filled with wand boxes and and the like and shelves. You can also see that we've got a little display case, albeit not the best-looking display case. I am not the greatest when it comes to armor stands. That's just true. We've got kind of boxes in the back here. We've got kind of a stack of boxes right here. And you'll notice we also have inventory. That's right. One diamond per stack. Boom. Look at those wands. We got, we got these kind of wands and we've, we've also got these kind of wands. (laughs) Yeah, it works. It makes, it totally makes sense. Okay. Just, just go with it. It definitely makes sense. Uh, but yeah, we've got a little Little table here, like I said, kind of the main desk right here. If you go up top, we've got a little some more storage back here. And of course, uh, you know, just the walls are filled to the brim with all kinds of, yeah, just messy decor, really. I tried a couple different things. I, I tried to go like with more of a grid type pattern of like, you know, like four, you know, like everything's kind of in a line and that sort of deal. But as I started messing around, I realized just the messier it was, 
the more right it felt, if that makes sense. And so I really do think this turned out great. Ollivander's wand shop. Now, if I could go and do it all again, there is something very specific I would change. And that is I would put that little side structure on this side. Not only is it actually more correct in like what the actual build would look like or what the actual building should look like, it would also help to create a sense of separation between this building and the owl shop, which I didn't really think was gonna be a problem and, and, and technically isn't a problem. However, the side of the owl shop looks really nice and I think we kind of lose some of that detail up there by having it just right up against the wall. See, see how nice that looks? Yeah, I don't know. I, but at the same time, it, it doesn't look bad over there, okay? So it definitely doesn't look bad. But I really love how this area is coming together. It's starting to really feel kind of like everything's just, you know, wrapping up around you and all that kind of good stuff. And oh yeah, Diagon Alley, how about it? Yeah, we're making it happen and it's looking great. Now let's talk about what comes next because I know I mentioned earlier, I don't remember if it was this video or perhaps the one prior that I had an idea for this section. However, So has reached out and has an idea for what she wants to do with this space. So I am very happy to step away from it. And, and I told her, you know, by all means, go for it, do what you want to do. I certainly have already done quite a bit in this area and I am all for making sure that everybody has a chance to build what they want to build in the space they want to build it in. And frankly, I honestly, I'm not sure that my idea would have really worked there. Now I've got to figure out where it does work. I could, hmm, okay. All right, so next building in Diagon Alley, it could be over here, which could be kind of cool. It'd be like, you know, while you're walking towards it, you'd be able to see it. Although I was kind of wondering if we should maybe put like a train right here. That might be a question for Knight. If Knight says put train, then we put train. If Knight says don't put train, then I'll probably put my next Diagon Alley build right there. Ooh, I say that. He says, while looking directly at a whole bunch of boxes, I mean, it's very possible that somebody else has plans for this. Are these building? These? Oh, no, no, this is just clearing out. Okay, all right, well, I don't know. I might need to look into that and see what uh, what's available. Because realistically, I mean, this spot right next, I could just kind of continue on down the line, but the build I have in mind has quite a bit of red. In fact, the, the doors look somewhat similar to this. Not exactly the same, but you know, uses a very similar palette, and I don't like the idea of having the same palette right across the street. So we would almost have to like redo these, this whole entryway, or we push it down further, but I kind of, I kind of want to keep building in a row or at least let somebody else build something right there and then I can attach onto their building. I don't know, these, these are the things, these are the things we must figure out and we will figure out, and it'll be great, it'll be fine. And then of course there's this build, which I've kind of laid out, but that might move. I don't, I, I like how kind of, I guess the Hogsmeade area is a little bit more kind of slapdash. And so I'm wondering if I actually just want to kind of like put it out in the middle right here to kind of add to that windiness of what Hogsmeade is or is, is trying to be. I don't know. Alternatively, I don't know if it's like if we're required to keep things down on this lower level or if it'd be possible to kind of make a bit of a hill to kind of add a little bit more of, I don't know, just, just some naturalness to the Hogsmeade area. Definitely a lot of questions I need to get with Knight about, so we will see. Now, speaking of Knight, I have heard rumors that, in fact, we have gotten some mail. And yes, okay, Valenco Horcrux. So, on the one hand, this is really great. This is very kind, obviously, you know, we love, we love getting presents and little gifts from our, our fellow crafters, but... I'm a little concerned here because a Horcrux is great. That's very on brand for the Harry Potter district. But Valenco? Valenco's not from here. Okay, there is no Valenco here in Central City. See, to know what Valenco is, you gotta know your craft series lore. And there is one thing that we do not allow in Central City, and that is lore. Okay, so we need to figure out what's going on. And fortunately, we've ju got just the office to do just that. And actually, this little map of the known multiverse kind of helps out, right? Because Valenco was first established, I think on Earth 3, if I'm remembering correctly. It could have been on Earth 2, but it was definitely uh, definitely on Earth 3. Valenco, Valenco sheep, the same kind of sheep that have been popping up around town. Talking about these guys, these guys right here. Back in the day on Earth 3, Valenco, a corporation that was established in Gotham, 
uh, was responsible for providing some wheats, some free wheats that had no problems with it. No problems at all. Don't question it. Don't ask questions. Everything was fine, right? I'm pretty sure that those purple sheep might have had something to do with Valenco and what they were putting into their, their wheat production, but I don't know that we ever really fully got to the bottom of that. So that's why we have this. That is why we have supercomputers, so that we can do the research on such things and figure out what on earth is going on. This thing right here <laughs> is a contradiction. It is a fan craft contradiction. It is appropriately themed as a horcrux, but inappropriately themed as a lore item. So, okay, what's going on? All right, all right, let's see what's happening, what's going on. Okay. Aha, yes, yes, okay. Scanning, multiverse anomaly detected. I knew it, I knew it. I totally knew this. Okay, okay, all right. Well, there you go, there you have it. We've got some kind of shenanigans at play and not just any shenanigans, but lore shenanigans. And if there is one thing that we will not stand for here at the Legendary Object Research Embassy, it's lore. So we will have to keep an eye out for what's going on there. But that is going to do it for us for this week. I hope you have enjoyed this episode and I'd love to get your thoughts on the Harry Potter district, the way that it's coming along. And what do you think? Should we keep the Hogsmeade area flat or should we maybe introduce some hills and a little bit of terrain throughout to make it give it a little bit more of like a natural town village type of feel? Put your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about it. That's going to do it for us for this week, but until next time... Ow! Oh! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs>